Today on the Two Car Garage, we're going to show you how we take our brand new raw cast brake components and protect them from the elements, as well as make them look a little nicer. All right, so here's what we got going on. So we've got our brand new brake components for the project that we're currently working on, which included some uh, new spindles to lower the car. We've got uh, rotors for front and rear, and uh, we've got our caliper mounting bracket. And as it sits right now, these are all just raw cast iron, um, with the exception of the front rotor, which has an aluminum hub. What we wanna do is we wanna protect this from the elements. We don't wanna have anything rusting up. And at the same time, we just wanted everything to look a little nicer. You know, so here we've got our, our caliper bracket and our spindle uh, is all painted up um, and protected with an epoxy epoxy spray paint and then our rotors we've got coated with a, uh, a brake caliper paint which will withstand the high temperatures of what's going on. So you're probably wondering why we're going to be even talking about spray painting stuff and quite truthfully um, a lot of you probably already know how to, how to do this job but I just want to show you some of the methods we're going for and uh, for a lot of you younger people who have probably never done this before, uh, we'll show you some of the pitfalls you might, you might run into when you're, you're trying to protect this stuff. Uh, I have done this on my daily drivers and I've had people ask why do I waste time you know, painting the, the rotors. And you know, the truth is I just don't want things getting rusty and, and looking bad. Um, and I know for a fact that the car that these uh, brake components are going on is going to be going back to the east coast. It's going to be living most of its life in salty uh, sea air. And so we don't want the, the cast iron to get all rusty and ugly. Uh, this aluminum hub, while aluminum you know, looks really nice right now, uh, I know it's going to corrode and it's going to start to look bad. So we're going to protect that uh, just to keep things looking nice for as long as possible. All right, so before we even worry about what kind of paint we're going to be using here today, uh, the first step is really going to be the most time consuming and that is just getting all of this raw cast iron and this raw aluminum uh, cleaned and degreased and ready to accept our paint. What we're going to be doing here today is a multiple step process and first things first I'm just going to take some brake clean and use that to get off the majority of this packing oil that's on here. And then from there, as we get closer to uh, painting, then we'll just be using a, a grease and wax remover to, to finish things off. Now, I will have links in the description for every product that we're using. Um, and if it's not the exact product, it'll be a similar product. Uh, just in case you uh, just want to order it up as opposed to going to your local auto parts store. Now, here's what we're going to do. I've got my brake cleaner and I've got just a uh, an already used rag here. Now these white rags um, I find really handy. They don't leave much lint behind. They will leave a little bit um, but it's better than using like paper towel or any of those types of shop rags because they tend to tear up pretty easily. So you know you're gonna want to get yourself a, a, a bag of these white t-shirt material rags. They work really well for this. And so quite simply I'm just gonna start here on the back side of the rotors and we're just going to spray this down, wipe down as much of this grease as possible, and then uh, we'll continue that with our uh, spindle and bracket here. Okay, so there's our first round of cleaning with the brake clean. And I can still see there's some oily stuff on the surface here. And that's quite simply because my rag really just got loaded up with all that, that oil that was on there. So now I'm just gonna go through and do another quick wipe down with the brake clean and a newer, cleaner rag uh, that isn't all coated in oil just to remove the last little bit of residue. And 
there we have it. There is our initial cleaning, uh, just using brake cleaner. All right, now that we've got everything cleaned up, uh, really the next step before we do our final cleaning is to go ahead and get things masked off. We don't want to be getting any paint down inside the uh, bearing hole, uh, nor do we want it where it attaches to the rear axle. So we're gonna just mask that off. Uh, I do want to keep the studs clean, uh, so we're gonna get some tape on there. Uh, we do have to plug these holes because this uh, doesn't have studs installed just yet. And then we want to finally, we want to tape off the face of the rotor that actually does the braking. Let's get to it, shall we? The painter's tape that I use is just a 3M, you know, scotch blue basic hardware store variety painter's tape. This is the cheapest quality that I will use uh, when doing any kind of masking. I've tried using some of the generic brands and just not had good luck with them adhering and then had even worse luck with trying to peel them off and they leave residue behind. So, you know, again, uh, not the most expensive masking tape you can buy, but by no means is it the cheapest. So that's what we're going to use to be masking off all of the, the studs and the, the face of the rotors and all that. For plugging the holes, um, I found quite simply, if you just take some disposable earplugs, you can kind of crush those down, shove them down into the hole here, and then once they expand, they kind of fill all the, all the gaps, keep that paint out. Super easy, super uh, inexpensive, and they are reusable, and it does a great job of, of cleaning this up. So, on this rotor, I'm gonna plug all of these lug bolt holes. Uh, on the brake caliper, uh, none of these holes I'm worried about. They just have bolts that pass through. Um, on the spindle though, I do have this hole here for, for the tie rod, and that's a nice tapered fit. I don't wanna have any, any paint get in there that's gonna interfere with the, the fit of my tie rod end. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shove, shove this down in there as well. So now I've got all the holes masked. Now it's really just a matter of going and taping off all the other surfaces here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get things masked off here and then I'll give you a couple pointers for uh, how to make things fit nice around all these edges. So here we've got our first half of, our, of this rear rotor all taped up. And I just simply ran the tape as close to the edge as possible in a spiral pattern, uh, making sure I got it up next to the hat where I could. Now you notice I've got all this tape sticking off the edge. I've got tape sticking off the edge of this, this center hole that's been covered up. And we wanna make sure we get that out of the way. And quite simply what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a razor blade here and make sure that this is all pressed down tightly. So now I can just take my razor blade here and I can just slice around getting it nice and close to the edge here. Just remove any of this little excess stuff and now that face is, is ready to go. And now to do the rotor face with the rotor flipped over here I can just simply take my razor blade and just slide that right around. Just get rid of this excess. And now you can see that our rotor is completely masked off. Now that we've got that done, it's really just a matter of going through both rotors now and plugging all the holes, getting these faces done. And so we'll just uh, zip through that real quick here. You know, now is probably a good time to mention that you do want to use a nice, sharp razor blade. Um, as the blades get dull, they start to just kind of tear at the tape, and uh, you won't get as clean, crisp of an edge as you're looking for.
so we've got everything masked off that we want to keep the paint off of and really the the next step is to go ahead and do our final cleaning and uh, for that I'm just going to be using some uh, grease and wax remover I use this duplicolor stuff because it's uh, readily available and it actually works really well um, but from here on out for the rest of this project uh, I am going to be wearing gloves and you want to make sure that we don't put any any hand oils or sweat or anything on the metal uh, as we're handling things now because that that could just uh, inhibit your paint from actually adhering to the surface. All right, so I've got myself now a, a clean rag. I know it doesn't look clean, but it's been laundered. And what we'll do here is we'll just pour some of the cleaner on the rag. I want the rag to be wet. I don't want to pour it directly on the, on the metal. And now we'll just go ahead and give everything a, a thorough wipe down removing the last remnants of any kind of any kind of oil or grease that was used to pack this up Well, here we are. We've got everything masked off. We went and double checked all the edges to make sure everything was good. And uh, we just finished our final wipe down with the wax and grease remover. And we're really, we're ready to start spraying. Um, if you're just doing this on your daily driver, this is as far as you really need to go. I know there's still some, some lint and stuff that's stuck in this uh, rough cast iron here. But ultimately that's not going to make a huge difference in the, in the protection aspect of the paint. If you want things to look really nice, the last step would be to go through and just get rid of all the rest of this fuzz. Quite simply what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take a, a, a clean plastic bristle brush and I'm going to wipe that off while hitting it with some compressed air and it's going to blow the rest of that lint off of the cast iron. And you want to make sure you get all surfaces, including these machine surfaces, because they, again, they just kind of pick up that lint and, and it can take an otherwise uh, nice paint job and just make it look subpar. So I'm going to go through, again, a little bit of compressed air, nice clean plastic bristled brush. We'll just wipe this off and uh, we should be all set to paint. Hey, you know, while I'm doing this, uh, now is a real good time to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the notification bell. We've got a lot more of this type of stuff coming down the road and you know, you'll want to know when it's coming up. If you like the video, do us a favor, go ahead and hit that like button. Um, if you don't like the video, why are you still watching? All right, here we go. Now on to the final step, and that's actually to get some paint on here. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, this is actually the easiest part of the job. There's no, there's no rocket science involved here. We just gotta get nice, even coverage on this. But one thing I am gonna say here is, uh, read the directions on the can. Uh, there's a lot of weird information out there on the internet as far as how to spray things and what to do and timing and all that stuff and quite honestly the people who make this paint and come up with these directions they're a lot smarter than you and I so follow their advice and you're gonna get a nice finish that's gonna last the longest uh, you can go ahead and try to change things up and do whatever you want but if the paint ends up failing don't blame the manufacturer. I've taken some really cheap spray paint and had some really amazing paint jobs out of that. Um, I've also taken really expensive paint and screwed it up and had really crappy results. So again, 
follow the directions. It's not that hard and uh, pretty much guarantees you're going to get a, a good end product. As far as the paint that we're going to be using, for the suspension pieces, the spindles and the caliper bracket, um, we are going to be painting those black. And for that, I'm using this VHT uh, epoxy spray paint. Um, I really like this stuff. It's got pretty good coverage, um, holds up pretty well, um, as good as you could expect from a, a paint out of a spray can. And uh, again, just follow the directions and, and you'll get nice coverage. For the rotors here, um, I'm going to be using this Duplicolor uh, caliper paint. This does a really nice job of uh, protecting the metal and also holding up to some of the abuse that the uh, brake system is going to take. Before you actually get started uh, painting here, because once you start, uh, you can't stop. You need to get all this work finished within, within one hour. Um, you want to go ahead and plan out how you're going to be supporting things, if you're going to be hanging parts, if you're going to be standing things up. And because like the rotors, for instance, we have to do half of it and then flip it over, uh, I want to think a couple steps ahead and just make sure I've got all of my uh, sequence figured out here. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint the back side of the rotors first. Um, there's not much there and I'm only going to do the inside of the rotor hats. I'm not going to do the edge of the rotor just yet. And once I've got my three coats of paint on there, then I'm going to flip them over. Now when I flip them over, I still need to do this edge of the, of the rotor. And to do that, I want to make sure it's elevated off the table. I found that the best thing for supporting, supporting things to raise them up off the table for this is, are just these little uh, painter's pyramids. You can pick these up at your local home store. Um, and a couple of those spread out lets me set the rotor on here, elevates this edge off the table, so now I can go ahead and get my, get my paint on there. For the suspension components here, uh, I am going to be hanging those. That just ensures I can get paint all the way around and you can see like if I set this down, all the edges will be touching the, touching the paper here. So this little bracket here for the caliper, I'm just simply going to take a bent coat hanger here and I'm going to do all my spraying hanging from there. And then after, once it's painted, I'm just going to hang it on a, on a bar that I have hanging from the ceiling and let it dry. For the spindle, uh, because it's a lot heavier, I don't want to be hanging that from a piece of wire, but also to ensure I can get all the way around, I'm just going to grab it by the, the masked portion of the spindle here, and now I can do all my painting. And then I have a hook already set up on my hanging rod that I can just go and hook it on there. Again, let it dry. All right, so I've got my cans all shaken and uh, really we're ready to get things painted. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint the uh, spindle and the bracket first so I can get those hung up and out of the way just so I don't get any silver overspray on them. Um, and I do have the garage door wide open today, uh, but even with the garage door open, I'm still gonna be use my, using my respirator. Um, this stuff is, is pretty nasty and uh, really, just follow the safety precautions, and if you don't have a respirator, I would suggest you take the stuff outside, um, and you know maybe even put a put a fan on you, just to keep this stuff out of you, because it's uh, pretty noxious.
Well, there it is. We got everything all painted up. We've got our three coats uh, on all the surfaces we wanted painted and things are looking pretty good. Uh, really at this point, um, it has to sit for three hours before we can uh, go and handle anything. And I really want to make sure that this paint is solid before I go and start pulling off any of the, uh, any of the masking here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to leave it now. Um, and then uh, I'll just come back tomorrow and uh, we'll pull off all the masking tape and uh, kind of see how things look. All right, so here it is. Uh, it's actually been, uh, according to my clock, 26 hours that this stuff's just been sitting. But I know now that it's good and dry. So really, we're just gonna go ahead and, and uh, pull the masking off. I'll grab the pieces that are hanging up uh, off of my rack and we'll peel the masking off of that and we'll just kind of see how things look. Well, here we are. We got everything all painted up and uh, things are looking really nice. Um, one thing we do have to keep in mind, again, reading the instructions on the spray cans, uh, they do recommend that you let this stuff cure for seven days. And I can tell you uh, from experience that that's, that's true. If I go and put this in the service too soon, uh, there's a good chance of me damaging the finish. Um, if you have to repaint it or touch up or anything like that, again, follow the instructions on the, the can that you're using. If you end up spraying too soon on a surface that's not ready, you could actually wrinkle up the paint and, and hurt the finish. So I can't stress it enough, just follow the instructions. Remember, those guys are a lot smarter than we are. If you're working on something like this on a daily driver, um, you could go ahead and put this in the service the next day. Uh, I know sometimes that's, it's hard to plan that way, but if you're gonna be doing breaks, you know, typically you're gonna go and buy this stuff ahead of time. Uh, hopefully you're not buying it the day that you're putting it on. And so you can paint this the night before and then go ahead and, and get things installed uh, the, the day after. In the case of this car that we're working on here, I've got plenty of time. I'm still a couple weeks away from even needing to put brakes on it, but that's why I'm painting now. I wanna have this stuff uh, all set to go, give it a good three or four weeks to cure, so by the time I put it on the car, I know I'm not gonna have any, any issues. Now, just to give you an idea on what it costs uh, to do all this cosmetic work, um, you know, buying the paint and the cleaner and the masking tape, and. We're just gonna pretend I didn't have any of that and we had to purchase it special for this project. Uh, but prices uh, current as of July of 2020, um, I'll just throw the price list up on the screen here and you can see that's pretty darn cheap for what, what we accomplished. Maybe you can find stuff a little bit cheaper uh, locally, but at least you have an idea of uh, of what we're looking at. Pretty straightforward uh, process here. Um, I know a lot of you are probably like, I already know how to do all this, and that's, you've probably done it before, but all of you younger people who are just now getting into doing something like this, hopefully you've learned a little bit and uh, you know, you'll know you have some success. Ultimately, don't stress out over it. It's just paint. Worst thing that'll happen is you screw it up and you have to start over. You get a couple of runs or drips here and there it's not going to hurt anything well that's it that's all i got uh thanks for hanging out here uh, especially if you made it all the way to the end and uh i think that'll do it i'll see you around